There's going to be a slight change in plans, not that I've announced anything about this. I'm going to mention things in this video which are probably not going to come to pass, or at least not in the order that I intended. I have, quite frankly, just been really unwell this past month. Completely exhausted and tired, fatigued and... So unwell and so unsteady on my feet, I've had to literally resort to using like a walking stick. You don't know what's wrong. Kinda pissed off about it really, and I'm just going to channel that energy into getting this out. So I'm gonna pass you over to past me and uh I'll catch you there. Hello, this is Ace, and welcome to a uh, developer let's play. <laughs> Make a man's Christmas Candle Free. A silly little Christmas themed fan game. Which was long, 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 long overdue. And finally got released at the tail end of last decade. Oh well, better late than never, I guess. This playthrough series is going to be multiple videos, but going three distinct parts, I think. Not necessarily three videos, just, just three sort of segments. It's going to be this one, which is the live playthrough, and I might follow up with some minor, small bonus videos. I don't know. Uh, this is going to be basically the only portion of this which is live, as it were. So, usual Let's Play stuff, but also trying to be a developer commentator, which is bloody difficult, saying that now, bloody difficult to think of, not only the Let's Play thing, but also things that would a developer only knowledge, as far as the game goes, oh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a nightmare, I swear. <sighs> However, the second part is gonna go through the history of the game just a bit more, because this has been a wild ride, this has been just uh, to say this fan game's been stuck in developer hell is just kind of an understatement. This, you know, uh, if you watch the trailer, you'll, you know, it's, you'll see just how long the gap between Remix and this game was, and you know, general idea, just what the hell uh, it's been like trying to get this out the door. So, eh, yeah, we'll get there. Um, however, we also got the third and final segments of the playthrough, which I feel is going to be the most important. So if if nothing else, watch that one when it's out. That will... I urge you to watch that section. Because honestly, this entire series of videos is probably the hardest thing I've ever recorded. The amount of emotion attached to this game is unbelievable, and I'm not going to get into any more details about that now. That is what part 3 is all about. Because I'm going to sort of psych myself up, and this is just a silly little Christmas game, right? Right. Not quite, but I'll talk about that more later. This is the finale of the Christmas Carol series, uh, and it follows on directly from the sequel to the, the, the first game. Good, good English. You can speak it, I swear. I mean, what happened to all the presents that got stolen? Who knows? But here we got Dr. Light and Dr. Wiley. I mean, Dr. Kozak and uh, Dr. Kozak trying to take over Christmas. Which was pretty much the plan from the beginning. It was just, you know, it seemed natural. You had Dr. Light in the first game, Dr. Wiley in the second game. Dr. White Light and Dr. White wearing Kazakh costumes in the second, third game because I think just having Kazakh normally uh, would just be a bit silly <laughs> and, and, and obvious. So this will be a little less obvious, which is just to have both of them, both Light and Wiley, in this game. Anyway. So, we have an aim entry, which you, oops, that is, is completely the wrong button. This is a very professional developer let's play. Oh. So, we have three playable characters like 
Chris McHale to onwards, we have Mega Man. We also have Proto Man, who's sort of more of a glass cannon. If you're going to do this, the achievements and try and get the Dragon Medals, which is Buster only, no damage. I would recommend going with Proton because he just does that bit more damage and his downside, which is he takes a bit more damage to make compared to Mega Man and base, is irrelevant when you're playing on a one-hit kill mode. So, you know, go nuts. Finally, we have the fish himself. Shut up! We also have four difficulty levels. We have easy, normal, hard, and that. And a little bit of a secret to how I end up developing games and difficulties and bosses, hard mode tends to be the version of the game I initially develop, and then the other difficulties are just sort of nerfed versions of that. Um, so I couldn't really name that many differences between the difficulties because I'm most familiar with hard mode. It's been a long time since I've been able to play this game because obviously I couldn't finish this development on this game. By the time to get this game out of the door, because uh, my wrists problems had just sort of degenerated to such an extent I couldn't physically work on the game, I had to pull in other team members and they managed to push it out the door. And I'm so grateful for that, that uh, they helped out. I think the game was about 80% finished by the time they picked up the slack, but um, yeah. So I am grateful. So these are our Robot Masters. These guys are not the original sets of Robot Masters I was going to have in Christmas Carol 3. Back when I started developments, sort of, on this game, when I was going to make a third Christmas Carol game, these guys were just like, not, they, they weren't even the, the, the glint in the milkman's eye, as it were. There was a different set. However, that set of Robot Masters were not based on the novel. But the thing about Christmas Carol is it's based on obviously the novel by Charles Dickens, sort of. Um, if you haven't or watched a film or gone to a theatre version, you may not recognise these characters. Because I'm very much <laughs> scraping bottom of the barrel here. These are the characters who aren't even remotely in the, the culture zeitgeist. We have Fred, who is based on Scrooge's nephew. And, to be honest, just having a robot master called Fred, kind of amusing to me. We have Belle, who was Scrooge's lost love. We have Mr. Fezziwig, who is Scrooge's old benevolent boss, and I just seem to remember in the novel he, uh, he danced a lot. He, he's a like big, jolly fellow. And we have Mrs. Cratchit, who isn't even really named in the novel, I don't think. And it's sometimes even cut out of adaptions, so, you know, of all these characters, she's the one that has the least defined amount. I think she's just known to have been an accessory to Mr. Cratchit. Because, you know, Victorian novels. Still, these are the Robot Masters. We're going to start off with Fred. Now, Fred's design is a little bit on the weird side. I mean, why, why is he a hat themed Robot Master? I do try, for the Christmas Carol game, I do try and do something that calls back to the novels with designs, sort of. Obviously some of them are stretching it a bit, and I think Fred's probably also stretching it a bit. We have Rush Coil to get the W tank. And really, I don't know, I seem to remember a lot of these connections are just vague memories on my part, because obviously how do you just adapt to... Uh, a guy called Fred into a robot master. Well, I, I seem to remember him having a hat. So he's a hat-themed robot master. There you go. In fact, I am probably um, combining Fred with, if you've ever watched uh, Black Adder's Christmas Carol, uh, with uh, Black Adder's nephew. <laughs> oh gosh. Who is just this bop of a man. And that's kind of what I wanted to do with Shred. I wanted to make him very a bit boppish, as it were. So I think he's it, it, rather than him being so much based on Fred, he's based on, I do not remember the name of that nephew, by the way. Uh, but based off the nephew in Black Adder's Christmas Carol. Which you know. Ah, ah my dear Millicent's come for her dinner. 
fancy seems to have brought the fish core slither. <laughs> Utter wet blanket of a man. There you go. So there are actually two uh, orders in this game where weapons rise. There is the weakness order, but for a bit of an added, added challenge, there's also the E-Tank order, which is the order you're going to get all the uh, tanks, just for a bit more challenge. So on the E-Tank order, which is what we're going to go with because I'm playing this buster only anyway, is Mr. Fezziwick. Who was actually the first boss designed and programmed for this game. Um, so to get this E-Tank, this weird cakey pie looking capsule, you throw a hat at it. That was literally a last minute change because originally you use Mrs. Cratchit's weapon, which is a pie, to sort of and he ate the pie and exploded and just did that and that was the idea behind it. And then last minute we realised, oh, you couldn't get all the E-Tanks. So, last minute we changed this to a hat. Shrug. So, this was the first boss made for the game. First boss concepted. I wanted to do something a bit wacky, like this. Which is the carousel. So how this sort of works is the it's a bit weird to get your head around, but if you just let Mega Man stand still for a bit, you should realise how it works. Based on a gimmick from Sonic and Knuckles in Sky Sanctuary where you have the uh, rotating fountains. And it pretty much works the same way, only one minor change. In Sonic and Knuckles you are movement locked, while on those you can only jump off them basically. However here you can walk, which will sort of change your radius. Because, oh gosh. Additionally, there are two layers to this fight. There is the foreground and the background. If Mr. Fezziwig is in the foreground and you're in the background, he can't hurt you. Bison. Uh, however, that's not true of you. You can always hurt Fezziwig. It'd be a lot less fun if you couldn't hit Fezziwig while he was in the background or using the foreground. It just didn't seem very fun to me. Uh, to counterbalance, because it's such a weird gimmick, it's like, it's, um, I had to make that fight very, very simple because it's such a weird gimmick to get your head around. So he's probably the least interesting of the Robot Masters as far as pattern goes, but I think just the layout of the room is pretty memorable, to be honest. Next up is Bell, who, if you've got a phaser weapon, you can get the E-Tank in this stage. Now, Bell's concept for the fight wasn't actually my idea. This was actually uh, when I was trying to figure out how to make an interesting shield master, uh, my friend Nat, uh, you may know him as Lyanna in a Magmal server, suggested how to sort of fit this in. What could be what could be an interesting gimmick, which is connect the shield to her projectiles. So you destroy those projectiles and that destroys the shield and that's sort of the the fight just sort of themed from there. I have not done a very good job there for destroying them. Whoa! So basically you've got to sort of make sure you destroy these. As you saw there, it makes it very difficult to avoid if you don't. That should be one of your priorities. Um, I think Bell's probably the hardest of the Robot Masters to do no damage. Simply because she's a bit convoluted a little bit, but she's doable. She's got a very predefined pattern. Uh, I wanted each of the Robot Masters to do something different pattern-wise. So, Belle's got a very preset pattern. She moves across the room and does her attacks. Fezziwig is very variable. But he'll always do the same sequence of attacks. He, he moves based on your movement and that has a major impact on how the fight goes. Fred is on an RNG, so he can pick any attack he likes. And finally we have Mrs. Cratchit, who is unique because she doesn't even move. And I'm really happy with how her design came out. I think she's probably one of my favourite designs in the series because she's just so unconventional. I also wanted each of the... Uh, almost... there we go. 
each of the Robot Masters in the Christmas Carol series to be different, not only mechanically, but also in looks. So, with three games under the hood, that's kind of a challenge, but I think this works. So, both of the Cratchits are very big, bulky, necky bosses. Mrs. Cratchit, in addition to shooting Mother's Pie, can summon these little capsules, which contain a uh, tiny Tim, or rather, the uh, pilot robot that's got renamed to Tiny Tim in Christmas Carol to Freak 2. Um, I don't consider Tiny Tim a full on robot master. He's sort of a generic piloting uh, mechanoid. He happens to be a boss. So, so I don't know, maybe uh, the robot master in Christmas Carol 2 is Cratchit rather than Tiny Tim. Oh, that, by the way, that's where Bob Cratchit is if you weren't aware in this series. He is the mech Tiny Tim pilots. Christmas Carol 2, and there's Cratchit. So, again, very mechanically preset pattern. She doesn't move. It's all about knowing how to dodge those individual attacks. Pretty preset. She's probably the easiest of the Robot Masters to deal no, with no damage. My god, that Mega Man uh, 10 art gets reused a lot in fan games, including this and every other Christmas Carol game. <laughs> We just don't have time! Um, it, it doesn't matter, because these games are short. In theory, have short development time, and we just don't have time to make new art for them. Which is incidentally why all the cutscene art isn't sprite based, because there's just no time to do it. Or well, there's no time to get it out on time. It, 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 I'll explain, because obviously this has a weird development cycle. Uh, we still didn't have time to do it, as it were. We had a very. We've got a release date, haven't we? If I wanted to make get this out last year, well, it had to release at Christmas, right? Ah. So, that was the four Robot Masters down, there were still four more bosses in the game. So, here we have Kozak Santa Citadel thing, because of course it is Dr. Kozak and not obviously not Dr. Light and Dr. Wild in crappy Dr. Kozak costumes, not at all. <laughs> You gotta look into the effort of having, you know, large fortress graphics in games that are just bosses. Incidentally, this game engine is act is the Magmol 2 engine, rather than directly the Mega Engine or the Mega Mix engine. You know, both offshoots of uh, Wrecking Program's original Mega Engine. But this is specifically the Magmol 2 engine, so it comes with its own form of jank as far as programming goes, but we managed it. So, uh, because this is just a engine that's fully featured, I get to bring back a feature that wasn't in the previous games, except in a very brief instance of the Flash version, only the Flash version. Gravity flipping, and here it's a fully fleshed mechanic rather than just a utter, utter time waster. Oh, for God's sake. Try that again. Good job, me. So, Gravity Flip is back. You know also back? The worst boss in the series... Hopefully Thix. So, this is the Slayer Attacker. This is my attempt at fixing the the, the worst boss in the series, which was the, uh, the first Dr. Light fight in the Flash version, which is just awful. So, here, you can obviously hit it with the Buster. It's got not too many more attacks. It's actually got way fewer attacks. It just has different ways of using it. It's all very preset patterned. And on and on a auto scroller, which I think is fairly interesting as far as it goes. This boss is one of those bosses that's very divisive. People either love it or hate it. This boss is literally Marmite. And the thing I've heard the most comments about in this game is, you know, people really, it's either people's favourite boss or least favourite boss. And you know what, I'm fine with that. I'm fine. Not everyone has to like it, the boss. If people, if some people love it, that's great. Some people really don't get along with these sort of bosses, that's also fine. And here is the boss making full use of the gravity flip as a mechanic. 
So, one thing about the upcoming set of bosses, um, a lot of them were designed for the original, original version of Christmas Carol 3. This is not one of them. This is like the only one of these bosses that's coming up that was designed specifically for this version of the game. But because this has a, such a wacky development time, um, there were lots of sprites made for those version, the previous versions of the game. This one's the only one made for this version of the game specifically. Or rather, the only design made specifically for this version. And there's a Dr. Light fight gun. So you may notice a, a bit of a dissonance with the music tracks. Obviously, the Dr. Light has this epic... Whoops. This sinister um, piece of music. Well, Dr. Light Oily has this jolly little track. So, if you haven't played the previous games, it's probably going to be a bit weird, but this is actually the Dr. Light final boss theme from Christmas Carol 1, and the Dr. Wily final boss theme from Christmas Carol 2, hence why they had these tracks in this game. This is the Russian doll Santa thing, which really plays up the Cossack connection. So the trick here is just to try and get keep him in a corner, otherwise you cover the entire arena and it's undodgeable. And since it's Russian doll, we've got various Christmas themed things such as Santa, Snowman, and. Okay, the third phase isn't really Christmas themed, but whatever. Definitely try and take out the uh, ice icicles if you can. They're such old sprites. I, I like how these still are, and I, I like I didn't have to do much fixing to get them up to snuff. And here we have uh, the, the everyone's favourite Christmas ornament, the Big Eye. What do you mean? It's, you know, maybe it's just popular in the UK, I don't know. So this is the boss that went through the most revisions uh, as far as my, when I was working directly on it and when the other team was working on it. This just kept getting get changed and changed and changed um, because it either was too difficult or not difficult enough. I think one of the last minute changes was the final form. Originally, he could launch his missiles from anywhere in the room, just where he had to land, and that was deeply unfair. So, in the end, the last thing we changed to that fight was he moved to the side of the room and launched his missiles there. The, I, th I think the first phase didn't get any changes whatsoever, and I, I don't know. Ultimately, where, as I said, the Dr. Light fight, people talked about that one and gave feedback, whether positive or negative. I don't remember hearing anything about the Dr. Wily fight. It, it never got mentioned. No one ever said anything about it. Meaning, I managed to make a boss that's apparently very forgettable, which is a, a big shame. Even the other bosses in the game elsewhere got some sort of mention. I've, I've, I've never heard anything good or po positive or negative towards the Dr. Wily fight, so... Ultimately, I think creators want feedback. They like feedback. I, I love feedback. I will, if it's negative feedback, I'll try and take it into consideration next time. If it's positive feedback, obviously that boosts my self-esteem because I've got something right. Either way, I think you should give creators feedback in a nice, sensible, calm way. And if you've got negative feedback, you can voice it. You can often voice the feedback and if the creator is reasonable, they will take it on board. If, however, you voice your feedback in a random, shouty, sweary, insult the creator and their skills way, they're probably not going to listen to you. Just a hint. Here we have everyone's favourite Mega Man style boss, the Capsules. And I think these were like the first boss designed for the original version of C3. At least sprite way, so. And it was Dr. Light and Dr. Wally from the get-go. So that was always on the cards. Absolutely always. I have to... Oh, gosh. I should probably pay attention, some attention to the fight. Um, once you learn it, this is actually... I think this is probably the easiest fortress boss. But if... Boy! 
if you haven't played the bite for a while, it can be kind of tough. Like so. Nearly there, though. So each of this locations the capitals will spawn um, does a different attack sequence. A very, a very predetermined attack sequence, which is also how I designed the capsules in, in Quint's Revenge and um, Mega Man Revolution. So apparently I just really like this uh, idea on like, how to make capsules, apparently. Uh, oh well, I think... There are definitely ways to make capsules, but I think if you want to make an, an interesting capsule that kind of needs a variety of attacks. And the only way you're going to reasonably get a variety of attacks is to definitely have a sequence, predefined sequence, I think. There we go, see? Uh, much e going much easier this time, he says. He says. So originally there was going to be like well, sort of a second phase when you defeated one capsule over the other. That was ultimately just pointless because you could just knock them both down. They originally had like split health bars, so you could take down both capsules simultaneously, or take down one first and then the other, and then it'd be a second phase of the remaining capsule. That'd be a waste of time because you could either just skip it or you'd be left with a harder second phase. With a lot of health, and it was just obnoxious. So I definitely wanted both capsules to have a health bar. I figured the best way was to combine the health bar and the final hit was so you take down one, then take down the other on the final hit. So you can you can, you can never lower it below one health. So as soon as you hit one health, the one capsule gets destroyed, and then you can finish off the next other capsule. It has a very simplistic attack pattern at that point. You'll just do the sort of Mega Man 7 spread shot, with the way it homes in on you afterwards. That's all it will do at that phase, because you realistically will hit it once it dies. And for a short while, that was the second phase because I was going to add more attacks in and it just as I said just didn't seem worth it. I think that I think how it ended up was definitely the better method. In my opinion. Incidentally, um all of the in-game cutscenes here were programmed by uh Snow and Pyro, who almost seemed that was like one of the major contributions to the game, and I think she did an excellent job at converting my script into uh, just gave that little extra punch it needed to be comedic. It was like some really good comedic timing, so I'm very appreciative of that. Um, so obviously the entire script of mine, you can probably tell because it's very British for what lack of a better term. You know, not. Not sort of this generic thing. Um, I did definitely try and make sure the uh, script was much more... Not as mean-spirited as, like, Christmas Carol Remix was. Because that kind of got a bit mean-spirited in places. I wanted this game to be a lot more positive in that regard. I think I, I think I was succeeded. I think this is gen I think this is the, by far the my favourite game as far as writing. As far as the entire series, although I do like certain parts of the original, just because of nostalgia. It's a shame, I don't... The original Christmas Carol game, I think, has a lot of quick problems, the Flash version. It's a lot of problems. It's also on the verge of becoming lost to media, because I no longer have the source code. And Flash is about to be completely obsoleted and removed from the internet, meaning I think the game, honestly, is going to become lost media, and that's a bit of a shame, really. I think at most I got access to the sprites, but I cannot open the source code. So, it is what it is. Okay, so, uh, thanks to the efforts of Yoshi Tom, this is no longer the case. There is now an EXE version of the Flash game. 
uh, she managed to convert it to get it to work as an EXE, so I will provide a link to that in the description. We are coming up to the final boss of the game, who is by far the hardest boss in the game, naturally. And I wanted this to be an absolute cap to the series. This is designed to say to you, yes, this is the final game, this is the last thing you're going to fight in the series. I wanted everything to suggest this is the final. This is the last thing you encounter. So, first, so we have Saint, who is the man behind the series. Saint is not my design. Saint was, in fact, designed by a uh, Mega Man a, a artist who has a lot of Mega Man fan art, uh, Justy Desserts, who sent me this design out of the blue, uh, like, shortly after Christmas Cal Remix had sort of wrapped up and said, I designed this fan character, I want to have a look. I loved it. And I said, yeah, I love this design. This is so unique and different compared to the rest of the designs. And that's and because each of the Christmas Carol designs is designed to be a unique entity by itself and not sort of just a homogenous thing, I loved, I love how Saint turned out design-wise and I had to use him. So naturally, even though he was designed years and years and years and years ago, I had to bring him back. He is, I think, the ultimate cap to the series. One final Robot Master fight. So, the music is Cow of the Bells, which was the Robot Master theme in the Flash game. Ow. And he also utilizes the powers of all eight Robot Masters from the uh, previous two games. You know. And he's, you know, he's, I think, fairly hard. Will you Please use a different attack, please. Because this is meant to be a developer let's play, I really want him to use other attacks. There we go, there's the candy cane. Present surprise. I... Come on. Come on, buddy. Oh, screw you. He's like one more attack he hasn't used. Oh, no, he's used them all. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot. He's used them all. Okay, so he has two phases. When he hits half health, he will change up what weapons he uses. Here he is using Future Scythe. This was probably the worst attack originally, because the homing scythe did a little homing action afterwards. My goodness, that was horrendous. I am just going to use an E-Sank. We also have access to Marley Shackle. Here's the past minion. Uh, so, fun fact about past minion, the only reason the Robot Masters selected are the ones selected is um, because they happen to be the ones in the Backmall 2 engine <laughs> at the time. <laughs> so it's just like, oh screw it, we don't have time, let's just repurpose and recolor these guys. So... So that's why those Robot Masters were selected, that is why EGD Attacks is what it is. I think it is a real cap to the series. I think this is how I wanted the series to end. And so I think I can't think of a better way I could have ended the series, or a better boss I could have ended the series. Well, he, he is hard. He's a very difficult fight. I am so satisfied with how that came out. And I think Saint was literally the last thing being worked on. The last thing I got to personally work on in this game, um, I was literally... I had Nat sitting next to me, and we were trying to... And he was typing up for me. Uh, which was trying to fix Saint that way. Um, so, Saint was the last thing I worked on. The rest of the team did other parts of the game and fixed up those guys. And just did the bug fixes and a little bit of balance changes I needed to do, and all the menus and all the cutscenes and all that. And I'm very grateful to how they <laughs> just to the team getting the game out the door. Uh, and to really cement just how. The finale of the game. Here's all, all of the uh, previous Robot Masters making a cameo appearance. I 
alongside their original names because who just makes robots before uh, for Christmas? They were originally other robot masks for uh, they originally had another function. And here you go to give it a nice, good, up close look at the robot masters alongside any potential redesigns I would make. Uh, for example, Want is a bit of a redesign there, ba uh, a redesign of the face a little bit, and how a redesign is also present in one of the ending artworks. More or less, they are about the same, and uh, yeah, Wishing Star. Putting in a completely different series entirely. I'm also happy I managed to make each of the storylines and each of the endings so different. I figured... Let's go the artwork route, and if I'm going to go the artwork route, let's really stylize it, which was done for two reasons, one of which, just to, one of which is just to stand out. <laughs> you know, do its own thing. The other reason is purely um, time constraints. So, we've got this very stylized storybook um, endings. And. They're also stored very large in the, in the internal files. So, they will, also, they will scale down, up and down, based on your screen resolution and have a, like, a bit of a filter put over them so they don't aren't, like bit crushed. I, I'm generally happy with these endings. Um, I really wanted to just hammer home a positive feeling and not be so mean spirit. I really wanted this series to end on a positive note. I wanted like, almost everyone to get a happy ending as well. Other than Kozak, because Kozak is just a universe's butt monkey. I'm sure he'll be released soon, it's fine. I, uh. I, uh. I just need to do this on a positive note. The fact Christmas Carol 3 exists even slightly is um, a, a minor miracle. Because uh, 2019 was just one of the worst years of my life. And it came very close to beating me a few times. Uh, I nearly wasn't. I nearly wasn't here. I, I... When you're in so much physical pain every day and that leads to so much mental pain is only so much you can take. I I'm not gonna speak about that just yet. I have an entire video dedicated to that. But this game is my middle finger to 2019 in particular. I had some help though. I did have some help. And the following people listed will forever have my gratitude. Nick, Lyanna, Tessa, Rhythm, Baron, a twist. 
you guys, gal, mean the world to me. This is Ace, and um, I think I'm going to cut the commentary here because uh, I, yeah, I'm going to cut the commentary here right now, and uh, yeah. God. Hello, this is post-production Ace. I'm recording this. Literally on the 24th December This little outro and uh, yes, I do feel absolutely awful but I also just wanted to say Don't worry about me I've literally been through worse than what's going on right now the second and I think during recording I hadn't mentally prepared myself I know you, people say you shouldn't be vulnerable on the internet and certainly not in such a public place as YouTube. But I ain't gonna possibly p pretend that the last few years have been as awful for me as I'm sure 2020 has been for other people. I'm just gonna spend the next few days relaxing with my family, just trying to spend Christmas as best I can. And if we're lucky, we can get the third part of this series out before New Year's End. I think that's important. And that's at least recorded. And quite literally the hardest thing I've ever recorded. I don't know when part two of the series will come out. I, uh, I literally cannot give any sort of ETA for obvious reasons. I sincerely hope all of you out there have a good Christmas as best you can. I know this has just been almost an apocalyptic year, just how bad things have gotten out there. But look after your friends, look after your family. Be excellent to each other. This is Ace, and I'll catch you later.